now have some time to read questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. But how do I find the main hall? Right. If you look on the back of the booklet I gave you, you'll see a map of the school. Let me show you. Look, you came in through the main entrance here, mm -hmm. and now we're here at reception. Now, to get to the main hall, you walk on to the end of this corridor in front of you, and then you turn left. Walk along past the language laboratory and then past the library, which is next to the language lab on the same side. And facing you is the main hall at the end of the corridor. You can't miss it. So it's next to the library, in fact? Yes, that's right. I should be able to find that. And do you have a computer laboratory? Yes, we do. Could you tell me where that is? Certainly, yes. You go down to the end of this corridor again, but this time don't turn left, turn right away from the main hall. The computer lab is immediately on your right, OK? Mm -hmm. And where's the staff room in case I need to find a teacher at some stage? The staff room is near the main entrance, on the left over there, just opposite the reception desk. In a day or two, I'm sure you'll find your way around very easily. Oh, one last thing. Is there a student common room? Oh, yes, I forgot to mention that. Uh, it's this area here, very close to where we are now, to the right of the reception desk as you come in the main entrance. There's tea and coffee facilities there. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That is the end of Section 1. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. You have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 14 to 20. Now, please look at the map I've given you of the house and gardens. We're here at the Information Centre. Follow the path marked with the arrow and the first area you come to is the orchard on your left. As you go further down the path, there's the kitchen garden on the right. And as you go round the first sharp corner, you will find to your left an area where different types of pear tree have been planted, as well as some lovely flowers. And this is known as Pear Alley, designed by George himself. Next to this is the greenhouse, where some exotic plants and fruits are grown. Follow the path round the second corner, and on your right you will see the entrance to the Mulberry Garden, with its 500-year-old tree. Past the Mulberry Garden, follow the path until you reach the front of the house. I suggest you spend a good hour wandering around this lovely building. A guide takes visitor groups round every two hours. If you would like to purchase any of George's books or other souvenirs, then leave the house by the side entrance, where you will find our shop, which is situated between the house and the garage, which contains the magnificent old Rolls-Royce car, which used to belong to George. I expect by this time you may also be in need of a rest and some refreshment. Most visitors are, so why don't you visit the tea room on the far side of the garage?
If you have time, there is a lovely walk down towards the River Dudwell. For me, this is the best part of the estate. This isn't on the map, but it is all clearly signposted. You cross the field, which spreads along the banks of the river. In spring, this area is well worth a visit. Spend a minute or two watching the water pass by underneath as you cross the footbridge, and then continue along the river walk through the woodland. On a hot summer's day, the trees along this path provide welcome shade. Eventually, you come to the water mill, which used to provide the electricity for the house. Only about four hours every evening in George's time. And finally, for those of you who would like to see stunning views of the surrounding countryside and who are a little bit more energetic, when you return from the mill, take the first turning on your left and climb up to the viewpoint. You won't regret it. Enjoy your visit. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute. To check your answers. Before you hear the rest of the talk. You have some time to look at questions seventeen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions seventeen to twenty. So, what exactly are the facilities? What sports can you play here? Well, this room we're in at the moment is called the main hall, and it's used mainly for team sports such as football, volleyball, and basketball, but also for badminton and aerobics. On the other side of the reception area, there's the dance studio. This provides a smaller, more intimate space. Which we use for ballet, modern dance, and martial arts, not at the same time, of course. Then, in a separate building, which you may have noticed on your way here, it's on the other side of the car park. There are the squash courts, six of them, and at the far end of the building, a fitness room. This is our newest facility, only completed in the spring, but it's already proving to be one of the most popular. As well as all these facilities available here on the campus, we also have an arrangement with the local tennis club, which is only two miles away, entitling our students to use their courts on weekday mornings in the summer. So, I think that there should be something here for everybody, and I hope to see all of you at the centre making use of the facilities. If in the course of the year. You have any suggestions as to how the service we provide might be improved, or its appeal widened? I'll be interested to hear from you. You will hear a man giving a talk to new members of a wildlife club in the south of England. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to thirteen. Now listen carefully, and answer questions eleven to thirteen. Hello, I'm delighted to welcome you to our wildlife club, and very pleased that you're interested in the countryside and the plants and creatures of this area. I think you'll be surprised at the variety we have here, even though we're not far from London. I'll start by telling you about some of the parks and open spaces nearby. One very pleasant place is Halland Common. 
This has been public land for hundreds of years, and what you'll find interesting is that the river Ouse, which flows into the sea 80 kilometers away, has its source in the common. There's an information board about the plants and animals you can see here. And, by the way, the common is accessible 24 hours a day. Then there's Holt Island, which is noted for its great range of trees. In the past, willows were grown here commercially for basket making, and this ancient craft has recently been reintroduced. The island is only open to the public from Friday to Sunday because it's quite small and if there were people around every day, much of the wildlife would keep away. From there, it's just a short walk across the bridge to Longfield Country Park. Longfield has a modern replica of a farm from over 2,000 years ago. Children's activities are often arranged there, like bread making and face painting. The park is only open during daylight hours, so bear that in mind if you decide to go there. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 14 to 20. Longfield Park has a programme of activities throughout the year and to give you a sample, this is what's happening in the next few days. On Monday, you can learn about herbs and how they've been used over the centuries. You'll start with a tour of our herb garden, practice the technique of using them as colour dyes for cloth and listen to an illustrated talk about their use in cooking and medicine. Then on Wednesday, you can join local experts to discover the variety of insects and birds that appear in the evening. We keep to a small number of people in the group, so if you want to go, you'll need to phone the park ranger a few days ahead. There's a small charge which you should pay when you turn up. I'm sure you're all keen to help with the practical task of looking after the park. So on Saturday, you can join a working party. You'll have a choice of all sorts of activities, from planting hedges to picking up litter. So you'll be able to change from one to another when you feel like it. The rangers will be hard at work all day, but do come and join in, even for just a short while. One thing, though, is to make sure you're wearing something that you don't mind getting dirty or torn. And finally, I'd like to tell you about our new wildlife area, Hinchingbrook Park, which will be opened to the public next month. This slide doesn't really indicate how big it is, but anyway, you can see the two gates into the park and the main paths. As you can see, there's a lake in the northwest of the park with a bird hide to the west of it at the end of a path. So it'll be a nice, quiet place for watching the birds on the lake. Fairly close to where refreshments are available, there's a dog walking area in the southern part of the park, leading off from the path. And if you just want to sit and relax, you can go to the flower garden. That's the circular area on the map, surrounded by paths. And finally, there's a wooded area in the western section of the park, between two paths. OK, that's enough from me, so let's get on and have a look. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Now let me give you some idea of the layout of the farm. The building where you bought your tickets is the new barn immediately to your right. And we're now at the beginning of the main path to the farmland. And of course, the car park is on your left. The scarecrow you can see in the car park in the corner beside the main path is a traditional figure for keeping the birds away from crops. But our scarecrow is a permanent sculpture. It's taller than a human being, so you can see it from quite a distance. If you look ahead of you, you'll see a maze. It's opposite the new barn, beside the side path that branches off to the right just over there. The maze is made out of hedges which are too tall for young children to see over them, but it's quite small so you can't get lost in it. Now can you see the bridge crossing the fish pool further up the main path? If you want to go to the cafe, go towards the bridge and turn right just before it. Walk along the side path and the cafes on the first bend you come to. The building was originally the schoolhouse and it's well over a hundred years old. As you may know, we run skills workshops here where you can learn traditional crafts like woodwork and basket making. You can see examples of the work and talk to someone about the courses in the Black Barn. If you take the side path to the right, here, just by the new barn, you'll come to the black barn, just where the path first bends. Now, I mustn't forget to tell you about picnicking, as I can see some of you have brought your lunch with you. You can picnic in the field, though do clear up behind you, of course. Or if you'd prefer a covered picnic area, there's one near the farmyard, just after you cross the bridge. There's a covered picnic spot on the right. And the last thing to mention is Fiddy House itself. From here you can cross the bridge, then walk along the footpath through the field to the left of the farmyard. That goes to the house, and it'll give you a lovely view of it. It's certainly worth a few photographs, but as it's a private home, I'm afraid you can't go inside. Right, well if you're all ready, we'll set off on our tour of the farm. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, a word about the layout of the building. The auditorium, stage and dressing rooms for the actors are all below ground level. Here on the ground floor, we have most of the rooms that the public doesn't see. The majority are internal so they have windows in the roof to light them. Standing here in the foyer, you're probably wondering why the box office isn't here, where the public would expect to find it. Well, you might have noticed it on your way in, 
Although it's part of this building, it's next door, with a separate entrance from the road. For the theatre manager's office, you go across the foyer and through the double doors. Turn right, and it's the room at the end of the corridor, with the door on the left. The lighting box is where the computerised stage lighting is operated, and it's at the back of the building. When you're through the double doors, turn left, turn right at the water cooler, and right again at the end. It's the second room along that corridor. The lighting box has a window into the auditorium, which of course is below us. The artistic director's office is through the double doors, turn right, and it's the first room you come to on the right-hand side. And finally, for the moment, the room where I'll take you next, the relaxation room. So, if you'd like to come with me... That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. OK, that was something about the collections, and now here's some more practical information, in case you need it. Most of the museum facilities are downstairs in the basement, so you go down the stairs here. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll find yourself in a sitting area with comfortable chairs and sofas where you can have a rest before continuing your exploration of the museum. We have a very good restaurant which serves excellent food all day in a relaxing atmosphere. To reach it, when you get to the bottom of the stairs, go straight ahead to the far side of the sitting area, then turn right into the corridor. You'll see the door of the restaurant facing you. If you just want a snack or if you'd like to eat somewhere with facilities for children, we also have a cafe. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll need to go straight ahead, turn right into the corridor, and the cafe is immediately on the right. And talking about children, there are baby changing facilities downstairs. Cross the sitting area, continue straight ahead along the corridor on the left, and you and your baby will find the facilities on the left hand side. The cloakroom, where you should leave coats, umbrellas, and any large bags, is on the left-hand side of the sitting area. It's through the last door before you come to the corridor. There are toilets on every floor, but in the basement, they're the first rooms on the left when you get down there. Okay, now if you've got anything to leave in the cloakroom, please do that now, and then we'll start our tour. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.